Over the years, I've been asked so many times, Jakob, what do you use for sequencing stuff in AUM? And my answer is always, I don't. And I even made a video about that. Well, a lot of time has passed since I made that video and my opinion has changed because now I clearly do sequence a lot of stuff inside AUM. However, for those of you who have been following my channel for a while and you might have noticed a reoccurring theme in my music these past six months, whenever I do these sequences, they're kind of generative. <laughs> And so the three apps I'm going to be highlighting in this video, well, these are sequencing apps that are really good at generative music or generative sequencing. Now, I did have a criteria for this video, and that is I want to present apps that basically support AUV3. I want it to be easy to load these apps into something like AUM because that's how I work. And I don't want to jump between AUM and another app like you have to do with some older apps. Well, with all of that out of the way, hello there, dear viewers, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. First up, we have Cycle, spelled with a K, just like my name. Now, Cycle is available for both iPad and iPhone, which is a good thing, and it can run in a standalone mode. It, of course, has support for AUV3 and obviously MIDI. Now, this thing doesn't have a built-in instrument, which is not really that important when it comes to a MIDI sequencing app because you're supposed to sequence other things with it, right? But I do like it when apps come with built-in instruments because that means that you can get working with a very minimalistic setup really quickly. And when it comes to the pros and cons of Cycle, well, they're basically the same thing. And I'll explain what that means in a little bit. Just stick with me. Now, as you can see, I opened up some tabs here. Now, all of these tabs works like step sequencers. And right now we can only see two steps up here and one step in pitch and length. Well, if we drag on the sideways hamburger button, we can set the amount of steps we want in a sequence. And here is where it gets interesting, because of course you can do a boring four on the floor, 16 step sequence, but that's not what we want to do here because we want to work with generative music. And when you want to do that, you should set all of these steps to different lengths. And that way the sequence will change and feel generative over time. So I would set up this one to maybe six steps and then add a few note triggers in here like this. And there we have our first sequence. Now for the pitch, I would set this one maybe a bit higher and then change the pitch for here. You can also have multiple notes if you want. And if I play this, it probably wouldn't sound that well right now. But if we go down to length, we can set this one up to be longer and change out the lengths. And you can see that as it goes through the sequence, it behaves in an unconventional way. And this is how you build interesting sequences in Cycle. And this is why I love it so much. Now there is more things to do. If we press the plus sign up here, we get a list of even more things we can add, like rest, offset, velocity, chance, accent, gate, accidental, transpose, invert, octave, ratchet, control, and pitch bend. And control adds depth to this whole sequence because with it, we can set up a MIDI CC controller and use that to modulate a parameter inside a synth. Well, if I open up this list again, here we come to, well, the pros and cons. The pro is, 
you can do so much. There's so much fun to be had in here, but the pros can also be the cons. You see, with so much to do, uh, well, it ends up taking a long time doing stuff in this app sometimes. And I've had sessions where I've sat down for hours just adding different things. Well, if you get this app and that happens to you, make sure that you also save your sequences. Cycle is super fun to use for generative music making. And I highly recommend it to anyone who might be into that or to anyone who wants to get into it. The app usually costs about $8, $7.99 and it goes out for $4.99 when it's on sale. I don't know when that will be, but yeah, if you wanted to wait, you know that now. Next up is C-Node Graph Sequencer. And in a standalone mode, C-Node actually has a built-in synthesizer. Now it sounds okay, but it's very limited. And even though you can make kind of drum sounds with it, the synthesizer does leave a lot to be desired if you wanna get really down and dirty with synthesis. But it's enough for you to run it in a standalone mode and get stuff going instantly. Unfortunately, C-Note is only available for iPad and I don't know if there's gonna be an iPhone version available for it. Now, when you load C-Node up as an AUV3, if you look down here, you can see there is no synthesizer. It's because C-Node is a MIDI sequencing app and you're supposed to hook it up to other things. Now, what you're seeing in here are three things. You're seeing the screen boxes, which is basically your note emitter. So this will emit a pulse that goes through the sequence that you set up. Secondly, there are blue nodes in here and these are the things actually holding the notes in the sequence. Lastly, there are these arrows and they're showing you how a sequence can move between the nodes. And as you can see, you can send the sequence back and forth between nodes. Now this gets interesting because you have a probability setting. But if we start from scratch and just load a new project and press here and add an emitter, then if we go down here, we can see that we have some settings for the emitter. We can set up the division for the pulse output. We can set up the velocity for the nodes, the octave and transpose. And if we press this box here, we can also set up the output MIDI channel for this thing. Now, if we wanted to add some notes, we would have to add some nodes. So we activate the node thing here and just tap in here. And here we have an empty node. And these are not useless because if you put an empty node in a sequence, well, it works like an empty step in a sequence. But if we want a nodes in here, we could just activate this little thing here and then press a key in the keyboard. And there we have a C in there. Now, as you saw earlier, you can have multiple notes in one of these, and all you have to do is to press down another key, and another, and another, and there you go. You can easily have these nodes play chords. Now, there is a way more straightforward way of adding notes with notes in them, and that is to record a sequence of them. And we can do that by activating the record button instead, and then simply playing the notes we want, and they just appear on the screen. Now to move stuff around, we just press this thing here and now we can do that. And if we wanted to move multiple things, we activate this up here, make sure to select all of them and then move them down. Now all we need to do is to connect these nodes up and we do that with the arrow symbol here. Tap and hold down on one of the nodes and just drag it to another one and let go. And that's how you connect them up. And you can do this in very intricate ways. 
you can get some very complex settings very, very quickly. You can even have a node swing back on itself like this. This makes for some very, very interesting sequences. Now, I did say something about probability. You see, if we go to this one, which is connected to multiple nodes, and we go down here, we have stuff like velocity settings and legato and ticks. But if we press this box, we get probability settings. So here we can easily set up so that the sequence have a 0.5 chance of moving to the A over here. And it has maybe a 0.2 chance of moving to the G and a 0.3 chance of moving to the C. Now, if we do this on all these nodes, we're getting a very interesting generative sequence. Now, there is one more thing missing for this to actually start playing. And that is we need to connect the emitter up to this sequence. So we're going to make sure that this is activated, select the emitter and pull down from it and connect it up over. Let's do it to this one. And there we go. All we have to do now is to start it up and the sequence starts going. And because of the way we've connected everything, it's gonna go in all kinds of ways and we're never really gonna get the same sequence again and again. And I think I made a mistake there because it keeps going back to itself. That's not a good thing. Let's go to the C over here and make sure that it's connected to something else so that the sequence have some way of escaping so it doesn't end up in a perpetual loop. recommend CNode to everyone who is interested in generative music. It's such a fun app to work with. The normal price of the app is $9.99, so $10, and it does go on sale sometimes for $6.99 if you want to wait. Lastly, we've got Zoa, Living MIDI Sequencer. Zoa is available for both iPad and iPhone, and it can run in a standalone mode, has support for AUV3, and obviously MIDI. Now, in the standalone mode, you also have a built-in synthesizer, but it's very limited because you can't really do much with the synth. You can't really do anything with the synth. What you hear is what you get. One thing I want to highlight, though, is that this thing is using an algorithm for generating notes called Conway's Way of Life. Wait, what? No, it's Game of Life. Conway's Game of Life. And you might know about it if you're an synthesizer owner, because that thing actually has that algorithm in there. Imagine that, but as a sequencer plugin only. That's what ZOA is. You have up to four tracks and you have your pattern down here and then you can set up the length or the amount of steps and then you just put in your note triggers. And you can of course have different settings for each track. Now the interface of ZOA is very straightforward. What you see is what you get. Up here you have settings for the note grid and um, there's a good amount of different scales in here. And then you've got settings for the uh, Conway's Game of Life algorithm in here. You can have a large grid or a small grid with notes. And on the track side, well, the length here sets up the note gate, basically how long of a note it plays the rule of how it plays notes, if it goes up in pitch or down in pitch or up and down, kind of like an arpeggiator. 
You can offset the pitch here and you can set velocity over here. As you can see, there's a limited amount of controls for this thing, but you can easily make interesting generative patches with this. And on top of that, you also have modulation output, up to eight different CCs that you can set up. And these will basically send out random value amounts for whatever controller you're modulating. There's not much more to say about it. It's really straightforward. And I really enjoy the fact that it has a built-in synthesizer so that I can just, you know, open it up on my iPhone when I'm on the bus and get something going, save it, and then continue working on it when I get home on my iPad. I absolutely love this one. The normal price for ZOA is $7.99 and it does occasionally go on sale for $3.99 if you want to wait for a sale. I want to start out this last segment by saying that I'm an idiot and I've been an idiot for four years. For four whole years, I've been using Fugue Machine with the assumption that it doesn't support AUV3. Well, it turns out that it does. And I finally realized it yesterday after uploading this video. Yes, correct. I did upload this video that you're watching right now yesterday, but I had to delete it because within a minute, I had so many comments from people saying, Jakob, you're wrong about Fugue Machine. Because in that video, I was stating that Fugue Machine doesn't have any support for AUV3. And even though it makes me look like a fucking idiot for not realizing this for four years, I'm still happy. I'm really happy. You have no idea how happy I am because I love Fugue Machine. And it's so nice to be able to load it up as an AUV3 and not having to jump between Fugue Machine and AUM like with older apps. So, I cannot recommend Fugue Machine enough. If you're into generative music, this is a no-brainer and you seriously need to check this one out. Now, I've been wondering how have I been able to miss the fact that Fugue Machine has AUV3. I should have seen it earlier, but I haven't. And I think that people have been trying to tell me this before in comments, and it just didn't register. And one of the things I do when I open AUM is I add an instrument channel, then I go to the instrument slot, and I open it up, and I use the search bar. And when you do that with Fugue Machine, you'll find it as an inter-app audio unit, like the older format. And if you use it like that, you have to jump between AUM and Fugue Machine. So the next logical thing would be to open up a MIDI channel and start searching for it there, right? Well, I haven't done that. I've just assumed that it, there is no AUV3 support. So I've stopped. And then you might say, but Joko, when working with this video, shouldn't you have seen it when you loaded the other MIDI sequencers? Well, yes, you would be correct. Only in those cases, I also used the search bar. And if I had scrolled through the list, I might have actually seen it. But I've scrolled through that list a lot and I still haven't seen it. What can I say? Sometimes I just f*** up. So if you're into node sequencing, then Nodebeat is definitely one of those apps. Also, Dot Melody is an app that I really recommend having a look at because it's really fun to work with. Now, even though these apps are older and they do not support AUV3, I've double checked, triple checked and quadruple checked. They don't support AUV3. And you know what? I want to be wrong about it, but I don't think I am in this case. Well, both of these apps are very much fun to work with. I love the interfaces of both. They're different from anything else I've shown you in this video so far, and they do work on their own just as they are. And many times they've inspired me to create music that I normally wouldn't make. Next, I want to say that if you're into ZOA, you should definitely have a look at OODA, which is made by the same developer. It kind of looks like ZOA, but it's very different. And there are some conditional triggers you can use in there, like wormholes and stuff. Well, I highly recommend that you have a look at it. And this one fortunately supports AUV3. Now, there is one more category, and that is when it comes to drumming. You see, if you want to do interesting drumming sessions or generative drumming sessions, you could basically use all of the apps I've mentioned in this video, or you could use apps that were designed for drumming, like Different Drummer or Polybeat. And by the way, Polybeat, if you think it looks like Cycle, well, it does because it's made by the same developer, Kune Driespong, and I'm butchering that name. So if you're into generative drumming, then definitely have a look at these two apps. The last app I want to mention is something I've already mentioned earlier in this video, and that is Synthesizer. 
Synthesizer has that name because it is a synthesizer, but it has a great sequencer also, and it also has that Conway's Game of Life algorithm I mentioned before. Now before you leave, comment down below, did you know about these MIDI sequencers? Maybe you already own some of them. If you do, which one do you like the best? Or maybe you're not interested in MIDI sequencing at all. Spill your hearts down there in the comment section. You can find links to all of the apps I've been talking about down in a pinned comment, along with links to various social network sites where I'm at. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, which you should, then do that. Now, if you do want to support the work I do here on the channel, if you want to see more videos like this, then press the thumbs up. If you want to support me in a financial way, then go check out my music, full list of links down below. If you don't want to do that, I've got Patreon and PayPal. And if you don't want to do any of it, that's fine too. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Are you still here? Because if you are, you're about to hear my potato balcony story. Oh, and by the way, if you end up watching this and you comment down below, why don't you put a little potato emoji in your comment down below? You see, me and my partner have been growing potatoes on our balcony. And back in May, 23rd of May, this is what it looked like. So my, I say us or we, but Literally, literally, well, my partner planted the potatoes into the dirt. And there's a special thing with this dirt. You see, we don't have any food waste in our home. We have something called a bokashi compost. And basically, you put all of your food waste into this bucket together with this uh, kind of grain stuff. And then it stews and brews. And you mix this after a few months. You mix it with dirt from outside and some worms. And then they feed on all of that content that you've put into this thing. And they create soil, fertile soil. And that's the soil we've been using for our potatoes. And then if we jump ahead to the 3rd of June, it starts looking like this. So it's been almost, what is it, like uh, one and a half month, and the potatoes are starting to pop up uh, out of the buckets. And I'm just, uh, I can't wait to eat potato salad with our own potatoes. By the way, if you look underneath the buckets, you can see big boxes. And these are our dirt farms with the worms and the bukashi compost and all of the dirt in it. So yeah, while this stuff is growing on top, we're creating more new dirt or new soil underneath. So a little time passed and I harvested um, some uh, wild strawberries. I love these. Well, time passed and the potatoes grew and grew and started blooming. This is in June 27th. And if I find another picture here, here's another picture. Here you can see how much they've grown. And this has been a month. And in a month, they've grown this much. Because there's so much nutrients in that soil from our Bokashi compost. And I just, I'm salivating by my teeth just thinking about all the lovely potato salads I'm going to be eating. Well, time went by and about, I think, uh, I don't know, a month later, we harvested two buckets of potatoes. And this is what it looks like. So these are, we call them almond potatoes in Swedish. I'll put up the Latin name up here so you can find out more about them if you want to. But yeah, I mean, dirty little potatoes. And we made a real mess on our kitchen floor while we did this. Yeah, that's what it looks like trying to grow potatoes in your apartment. We weighed them and it turns out that we ended up with almost a kilo of potatoes. I'll put it up in pounds for those of you who don't use the metric system. Metric? Is that the metric system? And don't worry, I did tear the uh, bucket itself. So the weight of the bucket isn't counted into this. Now, at this point, I was curious how much the dirt on the potatoes were actually weighing. So I cleaned up the potatoes and reweighed them. Reweighed? I think you could say that. And it turns out that about 10 grams or something like that was actually dirt. But yeah, so I went outside and took a nice photo or some footage of these uh, almond potatoes and they look so lovely and I'm uh, I'm hungry at this point. Well, I did go to boil these potatoes and that's our own homegrown dill in there in that thing and at this point my my stomach is growling. I'm I'm so looking forward to this potato salad, but you know, you have to let the potato cool down first and the best potato you can use for potato salad 
is basically potatoes that you boil the day before, you let them cool in the fridge, and then you use them the day after. Well, this is what the potatoes looked like when they were done boiling. So almond potatoes, they have this brittle skin, and if you boil them too hard, they will break up. And the best thing is to just boil them for a while and then take them off the stove and then just let them just after cook in the warm water. But it looks like a very nice plate of potatoes and I just couldn't wait to eat them, but I had to. I waited a day to eat these potatoes and it was the best potato salad I've ever had in my life, bar none. Now we still have more potatoes on the balcony and oh, can you see that little clay duck over there, you know? There, there's a clay duck. Yeah, I love ducks. Well, this weekend, we're gonna harvest another bucket or two of potatoes and we're gonna have some more potato salads. If you're still here, still watching this, still listening into this story, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Oh, and remember to put a little potato emoji in your comment, comment down below.